Hey guys, my name is Micah, and I've been on my own detox journey for the past couple of years. Um, I used to not understand what clogged detox pathways meant, and um, I actually ran into a bit of trouble by exceeding the speed that my detox pathways could get rid of some stuff. And um, the unfortunate situation allowed me to figure out how that stuff works, and that's what I'm going to try to explain. Um, this is the top-down view of a factory, and uh, I'm going to show how we're going to take nutrients and toxins through the factory, and we're going to try to make some poop, and because uh, that's what we do. And um, once I explain a little bit, I'll get into the law of minimum and why I'd like to bring that into this to help show what's going on. So um, here's our factory top down. These are the front doors. That's where our nutrients come in and they're, they have to go down these assembly lines. And if they can't make their way through the assembly lines, they're just gonna get tossed off to the side. But there's no way to get them out the back door without them being in the proper poop form. Um, or maybe not even proper poop form, but just uh, some form of poop. So what happens is we get some nutrients in and uh, you know, depending on the day, um, the environment, all that stuff, uh, nutrients either come in like you get a whole bunch of one and not the other, or um, you'll get a lot of toxins in and you'll have to figure out how to deal with them somehow because they can't go through this. The only way that we're going to get to the end of this line is by the worker guys here matching up the green and blue next to each other. Um, so until we finally get a blue and this guy can put it here, this stuff is going to be stuck on this conveyor belt or a worker is going to have to take it to some kind of special place where it can be stored or whatever it might be. So um, once we get past this first one, so let's say this guy got this one done. So he brought it down and he's got it and he brings it up to this next run. And now this guy needs to take that set of nutrients. And if he just keeps getting a bunch of these, he's not gonna be able to do anything with them himself. But once he gets some pink nutrient into here, once this comes in, we can get it right to this guy. Then we can finally match one up and it can finish this and go through the process. So um, our liver can do about 500 processes, something like that. And I see these channels as, or these uh, assembly lines as channels in our liver almost, or in my liver. And then sometimes you have special runs like our pancreas creating insulin or um, creating glutathione or something like that. Wherever our body does that, it gets some nutrients, whether they be from these lines or they come in directly and they can make those special circumstances. So essentially what happens is if once we get the right nutrients and we pull out the toxins, the uh, one of these lines makes a package, it gets to the next line, that makes a package, it gets to the next line, and eventually we have processed it and can get rid of it. This is, um, you know, this is magnesium and vitamin B and folate and whatever it is that we need to consume to keep our body running the right way. There's this uh, law of minimum theory or whatever you want to call a law um, from this guy named Justice von Liebig. A uh, hundred and change years ago, he revolutionized agriculture with this idea because he realized a plant can only grow as prosperous or as fast um, as the lowest nutrient that it has which at first was, you know, very interesting to me, but now I see it's so incredibly simple because if you relate that to a car, um, you might have all the tire tread you need, all the oil you need, all the wiper fluid you might need, the batteries charged, but if you're out of gas, the car's going nowhere. Or you could have a full tank of gas, and if your tires don't have any tread and they're flat, then you're not going anywhere. I mean, you can try, but it's not really gonna work. Um, you could look at it as baking cookies. If you have all of your ingredients except for one, whether it's if you like sugar and it's, you're missing sugar, you can't make that whole batch of cookies 
the right way that you're thinking with that little bit of sugar. It's just physically not possible. You can't do anything unless you have more ingredients. Well, you can make a small batch of cookies that come out properly. You're only going to get like one cookie, say, but it's going to be the right cookie. It's not going to be this wrong recipe that doesn't work, and that's what's going on here. We need to get all of the nutrients up to the top to be able to do anything, and each one of these lines needs that. When we have only the green here and no blue, we're at a blue. The blue is the lowest, and until we get blue, there's nothing that's going to happen here. And this one, if we're out of the pink, it's just, we can't get past that. So that's how we operate. We take some of these things, sometimes instead of going to the next line, we use it to make energy, to do things like talk to you on camera. Or we might repair a wall with one of these blocks. So it, this is a factory, so it's, you know, walls aren't usually put together like this with random blocks instead of black, but you would have you'd slowly create your wall out of those things and every once in a while you'd have to put a new one. Well, what happens when we have toxins is we've looked at how we have to go through this process the right way in order to get out. Well, when we have a bunch of toxins that come in, whether we're breathing them, um, injecting them, eating them, however it is that we're getting toxins into this factory, they have to go down the line and if they can't go past the line, this guy's got to do something with it. It's got something has to happen. So in order for this guy to not get yelled at, because as these toxins sit here, they're either going to stay there potent, which is very harmful, or they're going to degrade a bit and sort of turn to a sludge that kind of hangs out and sometimes might like slime up the conveyor until we get a chance to come back and clean that. But this guy here doesn't want to get yelled at, so he's going to take this toxin, he's going to throw it behind him, or he's going to figure out how to pile it up in a a storage room or something. This could be looked at as fat, brain tissue, whatever is available for toxins to cling to. Um, you know, what I'm trying to do here is simplify chemistry, and chemistry only works a certain way. It, that's why you have to have the right nutrients to get through, because you just can't make things up. It, they have to work a certain way, depending on the energies and stuff that are going on. So sometimes when this guy tosses this toxin over here, in the factory sense, it might be a dust particle. And he throws it behind him and now it just goes up in the air and it goes into the ventilation and then it finally makes its way into somebody's office where the, the ventilation doesn't blow as well and it just builds up. Well, this office could be looked at as our brain. Our brain might just happen to be a nice place for an energetic toxin to stick to. And that's actually what happens when we, um, when we get when we're toxic, that's why we feel it and we're, we're poisoned. We're being influenced by the toxin and it's, it's direct energies. They're not supposed to be where they're going and we feel that in either fatigue or just whatever can happen, racing hard, all of that stuff. So what we need to do is first we need to fix the situation that's happening. The toxins either coming in or another problem that happens is sometimes we're actually built with the toxins to begin with. Um, I, my mom had mercury fillings and my detox journey changed when I started realizing that because I have to get rid of the mercury that I'm built with. It's instead of my body having zinc in the right places from the zinc coming in and building the wall the right way, I have mercury there because mercury and zinc, our body can use either one in the same spot. So when mercury is available, it puts it there because there was no zinc. Once I do the right thing and get the right nutrients through, I can knock the mercury out with iodine and have sulfur grab the mercury and then have zinc pop into the place. Here's what's going to happen. We've got a toxic factory that's going to shut down if we don't do something. Um, somebody's been pulling in too many toxins. Uh, the manager was getting cheap and decided that they could burn some kind of gross material and he didn't realize how bad it was going to funk everything up in here. So either way, it's, it's time for a change, and that's where nutritional balancing and the iodine protocol come in. There's other ways to do this, and I don't think I'll get into it in this video, but I'll explain how th this new iodine protocol and nutritional balancing is what I see as the right way to do this, because we're not only going to get rid of the toxins, we're going to rebuild our body the right way with what was supposed to be there to begin with. Um, because if we just kick these things out, uh, it's still empty and right when a new one comes in it's going to go right back there because 
that's just how it works. That's why it happened in the first place. And if our body is not fixed, what's, why would we think anything would change? Time keeps going on. More and more toxicity is everywhere. That's why our joints hurt because there's foreign life forms coming in and eating our joint repair juice because there's so much stuff going on in there that our body can't run properly. We're getting brain fog because the office is super clouded and our pancreas and stuff like that. I don't even know how to draw what's happening to that. We'll just like break down one of these because this thing is just there's probably a massive worm living inside the whole thing that's eating all of the juices in there. And that's why our pancreas isn't able to keep up with the insulin. So now here's the problem. We, we realize what's going on and we're like, oh crap, I got to get this stuff out of my body. But we still have to go to work and we still have to like, you know, live with our, our loved ones and not have them think that we're freaking crazy and talking about parasites living in us and nutritional balancing and all that because people just don't dig this stuff. So, which is understandable. They've got parasites telling them how to think. <clears throat> anyway, um, so the problem is in the world that we live in, we just want to fix this real quick and we want to get back to life. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. It took this took generations to happen. This factory was made by another factory that had this going on. That was made by another factory that had this going on. We've been putting mercury in people's teeth since 1830s. And they knew in the 1840s that it was hurting people badly. So here we are almost 200 years later with who knows how many ancestors breathing in mercury fillings, loading this thing up and passing it down to the next one. Anyway, so we have to do something and we realize that we can knock the um, toxins loose with iodine, with high dose iodine, and we can balance our body to clean this stuff up. Problem is everybody wants to jump in and they think they can kick out all the toxins and their body's just going to flush them out. But how did we get here in the first place? Was this factory being backed up? So we have to find all the nutrients that are going to come in and clean this stuff up. And the only way that we're going to do that is by looking at this thing and figuring out which one of these lines is out of one of those items. Is, is this thing sitting here with a bunch of these and there's nothing to, to cling with them and it's just gonna sit there and eventually start rotting and everything around this one's all brown? Well, what, what line is that? Is that the one that keeps us from getting depressed? Is that the one that gives us energy? Um, I'll get into all the scenarios that can happen with these, but understanding it as a whole is what completely changed how I started detoxing. See, I messed up by having these all clogged up and pouring iodine in here. So I'm gonna explain what happens when we take high dose iodine when we're toxic, because this is what a lot of people are doing or kind of want to do but they're afraid because they're not sure what's happening. All right, so I'm going to talk about what iodine can do when we are toxic. Um, small amounts of iodine, like in kelp or even less than we can get from the lowest strength Lugol's drops, um, is still going to do a whole lot more than we want to if, we're, if our paths aren't open and these things are all clogged up. So. To take it as a nutrient that is another, just another one of these that can help get these things going, we take a very small amount of it. And that's where starting low and slow may be important for a lot of people instead of just starting at a high amount and doing what I'm about to show. So when we take high doses of iodine, high doses of iodine depend on the person. There's some people that can take literally one milligram of iodine, which is very low, and have a reaction and then there's people that can take hundreds of milligrams and not have a reaction. Depends how this is all set up in here. So what happens is it doesn't matter what the dose is. If the dose is more than our body can handle the flush of its high dose and it's going to do this. So these guys realize there's a problem. They fire the manager and they take over the business on their own. They're like, those guys weren't doing anything. Let's take the money that we were paying them. Let's hire this crew iodine. Iodine is going to come in and it's going to be, there's going to be a whole bunch of workers and the workers are going to go up and they're going to say, 
this is a toxin, they're going to wrap the things up and say this is a toxin, and they're going to kick it into the bloodstream. And by kicking it into the bloodstream, that means it's going right in here. And now this assembly line that we need to do a whole bunch of stuff is just going to be full of whatever iodine came around and said, you cannot be here anymore, you cannot be here anymore, you got to get out, and now everything is in here. So um, let's see what happens. All right, so this is what happens after iodine kicks everything out, knocks it into the bloodstream, and it just gets forced through everything because our body really has no choice. It's being poisoned, essentially. And this depends on what is in the body. It's not that taking iodine poisons you. It's that if you're full of things that iodine can knock loose, which is most likely the case when we're low on iodine, it all just goes right into our bloodstream and has to get processed. So then what happens is these workers go, well, I can't leave this here, so I'm just going to kick this over here. And, and then it just gets piled up. And now it does this. Because our body is kind of weak from what's going on. And when we kick toxins out and we don't replenish them with nutrients, the toxins come right back in and they set up shop. And that's what happened to me when I took iodine. Not when I took it. Okay, so I started taking iodine about three years ago. And I started at 12 and a half milligrams a day. And I didn't really feel anything from it. I, I got some energy. I got some fatigue. It wasn't like, oh, wow, I must have needed this. I slowly worked my way up. Um, I added about two and a half milligrams to my daily uh, once a week. So I, would, I started off with uh, the 12 and a half milligrams. And then the second week, I added 2.5 to that, so I took 15 milligrams. And then the week after that, I added 2.5. And I made my way up to like 25 milligrams. Um, I had an interesting experience with bromide detox. Uh, and then I tried to get over 30 milligrams, and I started feeling pretty foggy. And what was happening was I was slowly starting to get enough to start knocking it into my bloodstream and then getting it caught up in my brain. And it, I would try taking more, and it would just get worse, and I would try to figure out what was happening, and I didn't understand what was going on enough. So, after doing that for a bit, I was like, well, um, the uh, main iodine group advocates taking 50 milligrams of iodine, and that's the protocol with, you know, the, the cofactors that go with it. So, I was like, well, you know, maybe I'm maybe this high dose iodine that people are talking about, I'm messing up by taking the small amount because that's kind of what the, the general idea is that we just need to get more. So I started taking more. I went up to like 75 milligrams and 90 milligrams and 120. And it wasn't making me feel worse, but I was just working my way up to see if there was some kind of magical dose that I kept reading about. Um, and then I ended up taking probably anywhere from 1,300 to 2,000 milligrams or something within about a week by just working my way up and doubling it sometimes and just trying a higher and higher dose. So I stopped, and then three days later I woke up and felt like I was hit by a bus. And what happened was the amount of iodine I took was enough to go in and knock all of the stuff into here for them to kick it all back out and go all up into everything again. And it... I had insane anxiety from it going into my kidneys. Um, I had like the inability to think and like form sentences and stuff because it was in my brain. Um, I was super tired from I'm sure who knows how many nuclear reactions going off in my brain and stuff while I'm acute mercury poisoned. Um, and this is this is not an iodine specific. Um, scenario here. This is too much detox with closed pathways. Um, I started doing this by mistake by eating a ton of fruit. I Years before I got into iodine, what probably led me to iodine was I started eating a high fruit diet and my eyesight went to crap because I was knocking stuff loose and it was clinging onto my eye muscles or something like that. 
Um, but this is it. We just need to find what we're lowest on in the good nutrients, get rid of the toxin input, keep getting whatever we're lowest on by figuring out why we feel certain ways, which system is shut down, and support it, give it the nutrients it needs, and it'll start cleaning itself out and getting the stuff out the bottom the right way. It doesn't matter what we do in here. If there's not a well-formed factory package coming out of here for every well-formed meal that comes in, it's not working. Um, if what's coming out is not well-formed, doesn't look like a, a piece of sausage, pretty much, um, exactly with the, the bend to it as well, it's something's not right and we can it, when you go to the doctor in India they ask you how you're pooping because you can essentially look at how that package is coming out of the factory and figure out what's low over here and yeah that's it um, this is a lot harder to explain than I ever imagined so hopefully this helps a little bit and um, if you have any feedback on how I can make it a little bit better, uh, go for it. If this whole detox thing doesn't work for you, I'm, I'm not trying to convince anybody that detoxing works. I, if you don't, if you think you can take in toxins and not eat nutrition, that's fine. You can go ahead and keep thinking that. Um, but if, if you have specific questions about how like MTHFR works or how insulin resistant works or how certain drugs shut down certain pieces of this, um, or how to get past certain hurdles, um, or what your hurdles might be, because it took me a long time to figure out that I'm the way I am because my mom had mercury fillings. And once I figured that out, it completely changed how I healed, um, how my life worked. So, yeah, so, um, Leave me some feedback, uh, subscribe if you can, this is a new channel, uh, share it with people if you can because um, there might be somebody out there that needs this type of um, explanation to understand what's happening here. Alright, thanks for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed.